Greetings, One Boy Body here, One Boy Made It. Today, I'm going to be demonstrating how to make this beautiful basket weave scarf. Yes, this is a project that beginners can do. Now, I know some of you may not be beginner beginners, and sometimes it seems like I'm going too slow for you or you want to jump ahead. Well, what I've done is I put chapters down in the description box, meaning that if you think I'm going too slow or, or I'm repeating too much, then you just look in the description box to the place where you want to be, click the number and you are there. I think this is going to make a wonderful scarf for somebody's Christmas. You know what? Let's just get to it. So the first thing you need, of course, is some yarn. You need a loom with at least 20 three pegs. You're going to need a row counter. It's so important that you're able to keep up precisely with the amount of rows that you're doing at any given time or in any given section. So I can't believe that I lived, I just got this a few weeks ago, I can't believe that I used to live without this. Uh, whenever I finish a row, I just smash this and it keeps count for me. Now, the way I used to do it, I used to have some baubles and bangles and little trinkets and I would put some on the side and I'd say, oh, okay, I've done one row. Let me put that over there. Row two, I've done two rows. Put that, how many, and I would keep count of my little trinkets to let me know where I was. Now that does work. I do highly recommend this, recommend this counter though, or something like this. And it's only a few dollars and it's really, really amazing. But however it is that you count your rows, then it's really important to be precise and exact in counting your rows for this project. The other thing you're going to need to do is to mark your loom. You're going to need a way to mark your loom. With this loom, I used nail polish to mark the pegs that I needed to mark. On the project today, as I demonstrate, I'm going to be using these little hair ties. It doesn't matter uh, what colors they are, um, but because we're going to be marking in groups of threes, the, the color is not important. You can use hair ties, you can use rubber bands. These are actual knit markers that as long as they fit around the peg, anything that fits on the peg, any way that you have of marking the peg, uh, that's going to be necessary. And of course the pick and eventually you're going to need some scissors. This project is going to use 23 pegs. So we're just going to count out till we get to 23 pegs and know that the first peg and the 23rd peg, the first peg and the last peg are always going to be knitted. No matter what else is going on with the pattern or the other stitches, the first peg and the last peg are always going to and only be knit stitches. Now, we'll take our first peg and we're not going to mark it at all. Our first peg, whatever your first peg may be, and like I say, your first peg may be the same color, but the first peg that you choose to be your first peg, you're going to skip it. You're not going to do anything with it. You're not going to mark it, but you are going to mark the three pegs that are next to the first peg. So you're going to mark three pegs. You're going to skip three. You're not going to mark three pegs. And then you're going to mark three pegs. And then you're going to skip three pegs. You're going to leave those plain. And I think you see where this pattern is going. We're going to mark three, skip three, mark three, all the way back to the 23rd peg. And like I said, the 23rd, the first and the 23rd peg are always knit stitches. Now for this project, I have divided it into two plans or what I'm calling plans. And I have plan A and plan B. Now when we're loom knitting plan A, it simply means that the pegs that have markings are going to be purl pegs. So in plan A, we would purl these first three 
we would e-wrap knit stitch these next three and then we would purl stitch the next three and so on and so forth so in plan a everything that is marked the three that would have a mark on them either with the nail polish or a tie or however you mark them these are going to be our purl stitches and so we start the first mark pegs are right next to the first peg and we mark three right away next to the first peg and then three empty three marked three not marked three until we get to 23. that is our plan a now we also have a plan b the plan b whenever we switch to plan b plan b means it's just the opposite when we're doing plan b everything that is marked is now an e-wrap knit stitch so in plan b we would knit because we always knit the first and last so we would knit 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 and then the ones that do not have a marking in plan b these would be our pearl the ones that we would pearl and so on and so forth so we have a plan a which i'm going to demonstrate and a plan B, which I'm going to demonstrate. And basically, it just means that plan A and plan B are the opposite. We, we do the opposite in plan A, for instance, we would pearl, pearl, pearl where the markings are, and then we would knit these. And in plan B, these would be the knits and these would be the pearls. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make two rows of the e-wrap knit stitch and this project only consists of two stitches and they are the e-wrap knit stitch and the loom knit purl stitch when we make our our loop we want to use an extra extra long tail out for our loop so at least maybe 12 inches if not even a little more and we're going to make our loop with this extra long tail and so we have our loop and with the extra long tail now we're going to take our loop and we're not going to put the loop on an anchor peg if you have one and we're just going to go ahead and put it on the first peg that first peg that has no markings on it we're going to tighten it then we're going to take the tail yarn this tail the extra long tail yarn and we're going to join it we're going to back we're going to hold it together with the source yarn so these two yarns the tail yarn and the source yarn we're going to act as if they are one yarn we're going to put them together we got our tail yarn and our source yarn and what we're going to do is we're going to start wrapping because this one already has a loop on it the first one has the loop from our loop and so we're gonna start e-wrapping the second loop and we're going to e-wrap we're going to e-wrap all the way until we get to our 23rd peg now we're probably going to run out of the tail yarn before we get to the end and that's okay wherever you run out just leave it we're okay and you're just going to continue now with the regular working yarn by itself and we're going to e-wrap all of the pegs until we come to our last and 23rd peg and we're going to e-wrap that one and of course now in order to make an e-wrap knit stitch we need two um, loops or two wraps on each peg so we're going to go back the other way so that now we're putting the second loop or the second wrap on each peg so we're e-wrapping going back the other way and then when we get back to our first peg we're going to take the bottom row and pull it over the top row and we will have our first row of the e-wrap knit stitch so we're just going to go all the way back here and i want to remind you again that those of you who want to skip ahead 
then there, just follow the chapters. Just click on the numbers of where you want to be if you want to go ahead. But I'm going to work here for a little while. And I'm going to do two rows to get everybody started. And I'm going to also go into the first plan, the plan A. So right now I'm just making the first row. So our project starts with two rows of the E-Wrap Knit Stitch. And so this is the first row that I'm doing right here. And of course, remember, because we joined the tail yarn with the source yarn on the bottom, it looks like we have two loops. So we're going to just take those two loops on the bottom and act as if they're one and pull it up over the loop on top. And then, of course, we'll get back to where we just have the single uh, strand because the tail yarn stopped. Okay, and so there and there. So we're just pulling up and over, up and over, up and over, up and over, and up and over. And now we have done our first row of our scarf, the an e wrap knit stitch row. But we want to, so we're going to push it down and we are going to come back with our yarn and go back the other way because we know that to make an e-wrap knit stitch, we need two wraps or two loops on each peg. And when we pull that bottom peg up over the top peg, then that is what gives us the stitch, the um, knit stitch, you wrap knit stitch. So here we go. We're going to just go back. You don't want to make your wraps or stitches too tight. You don't want to make them too loose right now, but you don't want to make them too tight. So you just want them kind of comfortable so that they're not hard to pull over and everything is not being pulled. So just find a happy medium where you can work comfortably without without straining the puller loop up over so I'm gonna just pull it up over and drop it over on the back drop it off and now we have done the first two rows of our scarf all right now for the next section that we're going to do which I'm calling plan a we are going to need some type of counter because Plan A and Plan B each consist of six rows. And it's very important to get them um, the right amount of rows each and every time. It's very important to be consistent with the rows. So, all right, so here we're going to do, we're gonna start with Plan A. So we're gonna start here. And like I said, every first and last peg on our scarf is always a knit. So now we have these three right here and they are marked. So on plan A, we're going to purl these because all the marked ones are going to be purled when we're doing plan A. So we have plan A. Okay, and of course we're just gonna lay the yarn across these pegs here. There you go. Gonna lay the yarn across the pegs and for a purl, you go under and over the yarn, scooch up the yarn, pull the yarn off and put the loop, the new loop back on. And so we're gonna go under, over and scooch it up. And then we're gonna take the old loop off and put the new loop back on. And that is our purl. Now we're back at three that are not marked. And so these are going to be E-wrap knit stitches. So we're gonna wrap them and we're just gonna Pull the bottoms over the top to get our e-wrap knit stitch. Now we have three that are marked, so those are going to be purled. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the yarn. Now, naturally, it seems like the yarn kind of wants to pull forward here, but you don't want to cross the yarn over itself, over the peg that it's on. You never want to do that. You want to go behind that peg and then bring it up and over the purls. Okay, so now we are going to do our purls here. So we're going to go under and go over, scooch it up and purl and 
pearl. And go under and then over that yarn. Squish that yarn up, take off the old, put on the new loop. All right, we're back to unmark, so we're gonna wrap because we're gonna do the E-wrap knit stitch in plan and plan A, the pegs that are not marked are E-wrap stitches. And now we have three that are marked. And so we're going to lay the yarn across because we want to do our pearls. And so we're gonna purl. Now we're going to do a knit an e-wrap because this is the last peg and the last and first peg are always knit stitches. Okay, now we did one row. So we're gonna mark that <laughs> and we're going to now do our second row and we're going to start with the knit on this peg. And we're just gonna do the same thing we did going back the other way. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go back and forward doing the same thing. This is plan A, so everything that is marked is gonna be a pearl. And everything that is not marked is going to be an E-wrap knit stitch. So we're going to wrap, wrap, all right. And we're going to go up and over over, over, and now we're going to purl. Okay. And that is row two. Okay, I'm just gonna keep repeating this until I have six rows. I'm gonna come back when I'm near the end, when I'm finishing up the sixth row. But I'm just gonna keep going back and forward like this, uh, purling where I see markings and e-wrap stitching where I don't see the markings. I'm gonna do that until I have counted six rows. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, I'm coming up on the end uh, of the 
sixth row for this first plan A. Do my pearls here. And we're going to do an e-wrap knit stitch. And now we have done six rows. Now let me give you a little so you can see what I'm talking about with the plan A and plan B. All right, so on this scarf here, so we have, when you see these little sections, that's what I'm calling plan A, plan B, plan A, plan B. And it just helps to keep it clear in my mind, and I hope that it keeps it clear in your mind exactly what's going on. So what we just knitted was we just loom knitted six rows of plan A. So that's plan A. And as I said, now we're going to do plan B. But before we do plan B and between every plan, we are going to e-wrap knit stitch two rows of just the plain e-wrap knit stitch so i'm going to knit two rows of the plain e-wrap knit stitch now and then once i've done those two rows i'm going to go to plan b and then as you can see plan b is the opposite so we're going to be doing the opposite of what we did in plan a so this is plan a this is plan b and we're just going to keep going back and forward like that so um, right now i'm going to make the e-wrap knit stitch rows we're going to do two rows between each plan so let me go ahead and make my two rows and then i'm going to do plan b get you started on plan b Okay, so I'm going to right now just do the E wraps because we want two rows. So we don't really have to use the counter for this. What we're going to do is we're just going to go down one way, pull everything up and over, come back and do it again. So that's the two rows. So this is the top half of our first row. And so we're going to up and over. And so I'm going to skip ahead because what we're doing is we're just doing the basic e-wrap knit stitch for two rows. So I'll be back when I'm at the end of the second row. I'm at the end of my second e-wrap knit stitch row. And now I am ready. I'm going to set this back to zero because I'm getting ready to do plan B and we need six rows of plan B and of course plan B is just means we're going to be doing the opposite of what we did when we initially did the row. So, so the end stitch is always a knit so we're going to knit and now we're going to do um, these three are going to be knit because this is plan B and in plan B the ones that are marked are e-wrap knit stitches so and now these are going to be the pearls the ones that are not marked are the pearls which is the opposite of what we were doing when we were doing plan a so plan b the unmarked ones are pearls In plan B, the ones that have the markings are the e-wrap knit stitch. So that's, this is plan B. We're just doing the opposite of what we did in plan A. And so these without markings now are our pearls. marked ones in plan B are 
you wrap knit stitches. And because we always knit the last one, we'll just go ahead and include it. And so now we're going to Okay, and so one row of plan B. And so now we're just going to go back the opposite way. These are going to be knit now. And so we're going to wrap them and we're going to do the e-wrap knit stitch on the ones that are marked because that's what we do when it's plan B and the ones that are not marked are now the pearls. And so I'm going to continue this and that's what we're going to do. So I'll be back when I'm at the end of plan B, but I think you pretty much got the hang of what's going on here okay so I'm gonna go ahead and go away for a little while and I'll be back Cross. all right six okay so now we're gonna push this down a little bit and we are going to e-wrap all across just like we did before when we did the two rows and so that is the pattern. We do two rows of e-wrap knit stitch. Plan A, two rows. Plan B, two rows. Plan A, two rows. And so forth and so on. So I'm making a one row right here now that we have finished two rows of e-wrap knit stitch that went all the way we just did a one row of e-wrap knit stitch and came back with another row of e-wrap knit stitch and now we're ready to go back to plan a plan a was the plan where any pegs that were marked were pearls any pegs that were marked are pearls any pegs that are not marked are knit stitches so now we're going to do six rows of plan a and of course, the, the um, pegs on the end are always knitted. And now, because these are marked and we're back at plan A, we're going to purl. These are purl stitches because they're marked. And so that's what we're going to do. We're just going to purl these stitches and purl. And now on plan A, the pegs that are not marked are e-wrap stitch, e-wrap knit stitch pegs. And we're just gonna go like that. And then because these are marked, we're going to purl. And that is what we are doing so we're going to purl we're going to do we're back on plan a and plan a says when we see a peg that's marked that's a peg that we're going to purl on and so that's what we're doing we're going to do this until we have six rows 
and then we're going to do two rows of e our e wrap knit stitch and then we're going to do six rows of plan b and we're going to go back and forth like that until we and you can start to see a little bit of of the One, basket two. we're going to continue with plan a and plan b and in between we're going to put the um two rows of e wrap knit stitch so what i'm going to do now is um go ahead and let's see where am i i'm going to i'm at the point where i should be adding two rows of the e wrap knit stitch and then I would do plan A. For the sake of time, what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and do the two rows of the E-Wrap knit stitch, and then I'm going to do plan A. This is what I wanna say, when you're doing your scarf, you can just do plan A and plan B and get it as long as you want it to be. However, when you end, you want to make sure that you end on plan A. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do these two rows. I'll just start off here with you. So our next row is going to be, um, so that we can do an e -wrap, a row of e-wrap stitch. We want two rows of the e-wrap stitch between each plan. Well, I guess you What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a um, the section, the plan A that we did here, the first one that we started with. And I'm going to act as if my scarf is as long as I want it to be so that I can let you see the binding off process for the scarf. So if you're ever confused as to whether or not you're supposed to be doing plan A or plan B, what I have found helpful is I just look at my scarf and I say, okay, am I doing plan A or plan B? And I say, well, you always start with plan A. So I just go A, B, A, B, A, B. Okay. It seems like the next uh, plan I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing plan A. And so that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to act as if my scarf is as long as I want it to be. And I'm going to do this last plan A. Remember, you start with plan A and you want to finish with plan A. And plan A is where we are going to use the pegs that are marked. Those are all going to be pearl stitches. And the ones that are unmarked are e -net, e -knit, e wrap knit stitches and so here we go i'm just going to go now like i said if you're ready to if you want to go ahead and skip ahead and go to the bind off go ahead but i'm going to just work here for anybody that may want to see this again and work it like this
we're pretending that our scarf is the length that we're going to be. You can make it as short or as long as you want to be because what you're going to be doing is you're just going to continue to make plan A, plan B, plan A, plan B, plan A, as long or short as you want your scarf. That's up to you. However, when you decide you have it long enough, you want to end with a plan A. You want to end with the same plan that we started with. So you want to end with a plan A. And also we started with two rows of the E-wrap knit stitch. And so when you end your scarf, after you have it as long as you want, and you've done the last plan A, then what I'm doing now is I'm doing, I this is my second row of E-knit wrap stitch, E-wrap knit stitch. And so once we finish this row, our scarf will be complete. Okay, now that our scarf is complete, we just finished two rows of E-wrap knit stitch. The thing we're going to do now is we're going to bind off. And what we're going to do, the way I like to bind off on scarves like this, is we're gonna find that working yarn. Okay, gonna find that yarn and we're gonna pull it. We're gonna go and pull it so the loop is like super, super big. And we're gonna take this yarn from that last peg and kind of take it up almost to the end down here. Now we have this super, super. Now the only thing we have to watch out for is that this super duper big giant <laughs> loop <laughs> doesn't jump off the loom. So what we're going to do though is now that we have that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull the one that's next to it. In fact, we're going to go right into the left hand corner of that stitch and we're going to pull that super duper long loop in and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go to the next peg and let me see here. Okay, we're going to go to the next peg and right on the left, we're going to pull it from the left and we're going to pull, 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 pull. And we, what we're doing is we're loosening up this lat, these, this row of loops. We want them to be loose and we want them to be so loose. Now to pull it, you're going to go right into the left hand corner of each. And when you go in there and pull it from that way, you can pull that. All right, so we're gonna just do this. Take time to do this. It's gonna make all the difference in the world when, and so we wanna leave all of our loops. We want them to be really loose. We want really loose loops. Okay, so about like that. That's what, how we want our loops to be so they're there's like a little space. We don't want them hugging the peg tight. And so we're gonna go back through all of these and we're just gonna pull and I'm gonna go to the left and the left side of the each stitch and your, that will allow you to pull the yarn. So we're gonna pull the yarn. And the idea is that we're loosening up. We're gonna we're gonna um, go back the other way and tighten it up just a little bit and get all the slack out. But right now we're trying to get every single loop. Just we're gonna loosen up every single loop. We may have to go back and do the original. Pull some more yarn out. Now it may seem like this is time consuming, but I find that when I do this before I bind off, the bind off is not tight. It doesn't, um, sometimes when I don't do this and I bind off, my bind off end looks tighter. It doesn't match my the end that I started with. And so we are going to, we spent all this time and doing the plans and going back and forth and counting and being so precise 
that we want to make sure that and again when you we are pulling you're just going to go to the left side of each peg and, and pull and, and that and, and so we're going to do this and just want to get these loose loose it's going to be worth it in the end you want to use your pick to kind of help you get a hold of the yarn. That's great too. I'm just going to do it with my fingers. And we want all of these loops to just be, we don't want any tight, any tight loops or any loops that are hugging the peg too tightly. going to be pulling from the right hand side because we're going to go back now we're just pulling up some of the slack but we still want these loops to be loose around these pegs so we want them loose so we're just going to go back the other way to get a lot of the slack out but we are not going to pull so tight that we so we see we want them up I want to see a little space between them. We want them so loose that if we wanted to do the bind off with just our fingers, we could. We wouldn't even have to use a pick. That's what we're going for. And so now we're just going back getting out some of the slack, but we are not tightening. We still want our loops to be really loose, okay? And so going back the other way, we're just gonna be pulling from the right corner to take it back and get take up some of that slack. But we still want our loops really loose. And, okay, and we're just gonna Go back and take up the slack, but leaving the loops loose. We want loose loops. And taking the time to do this is very worthwhile. It's gonna pay off. So you just go into the right hand corner when you're going back the other, the other way to the beginning. But we want our loops loose and loose. And we're going to pull this one loose. And now we're back. So we're going to pull. <laughs> going to pull this one. Okay. All right. Now, we, our loops should be pretty much just hanging there, not tight, not hugging the pegs, just loose loops. Now, and so now we're ready to actually do the real binding off. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to do nothing with peg one or this loop right here. We're gonna go right to the second Peg, and we're going to work that one first. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the loop off, okay, and we're going to put it on that first peg. So there's nothing on this peg now. Now the loop that's on the bottom, we're going to lift it up and take it off. Then we're going to take this loop and put it on what was the second, and now that becomes the first. All right, so one way that I do it is I say, uh, one thing I say when I'm doing this is, I say, oh, I'm gonna go visit my neighbor over here. And then the neighbor says, oh, I gotta go, I gotta go somewhere, bye. And so then 
um, then the person who went to visit says, okay, I'm going back home. Okay, so then Jack says, I'm going to go visit my friend over here. And then the friend says, oh, you know, I got to do something. I got to go. I'm sorry, I got to go. And Jack says, hmm, I guess I'll just go back home. And then Tina says, I'm going to go visit my friend over here. And so she comes and comes over here. And then her friend says, oh, you know what? I got to go somewhere. I got to go. Oh, well, then I guess I'll just go back home. Okay, so <laughs> you get the idea. All right, so, so these are so loose now that you can really practically do them with your fingers. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go into the second one, lift it up put it on top, take the one on bottom, up and over, and then you're gonna take this one and put it back. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and do these with my fingers. I'm gonna take, go into the second one, put it on the first. You're gonna take the bottom loop, pull it off, and then take this loop and put it back over here. Go into the second one, lift it up, put it on this one, and then you're going to take the bottom loop and these are really loose and then you're going to take this one and take it back and again you're going to go in here get the bottom put it on top of the top and we're going to take that off and put this back go into the second one lift it off put it on the first one take the bottom one lift it over and now we're going to take this loop and put it back over here go into the second one get that loop and put it over here get the bottom lift it up and over and then take this loop and put that back over there then we're going to do this we're going to just keep doing this Going into the second loop, putting it next door on the left, taking that off, and then we're going to go right back to the right. And so this is what we're doing. This is our find off. Okay, and then we're going to take this and put it back. All right, now we're going to go into the second one, lift it up over here. Go to the bottom, off, and then we're going to take that one and put it right back. So we're going to go in here, get the bottom, lift it up and over. Okay, then we're going to get the one that's on the bottom, lift it up and off. And then we're going to put this one back over on this peg. Skip that one, go into the second one, lift it up, put it on that peg to the left, take the bottom loop up and off, and then we're going to go back here and put this back over there. Go into the second one, lift it up, get the bottom, pull it up and over, and take the one that is left and move it back to the right. Okay? And we're going to take the second one here, put it on what was now the first, take the bottom, lift it over, take this one and put it back. And go into the second one, take it and put it on that one. We're going to go to the bottom, lift it up, take this one off and go back to the right peg. Okay, go to the bottom. bottom lift it over and we're going to take that one and move it back right we're going to go into the second one and we're going to put it over to the left we're going to take the bottom lift it up and over put this one back over to the right okay we're going to take the second one put it on top we're going to take the bottom lift it up and over and now we have just that one single loop we're going to go ahead and take it off and we're going to hold the 
get it out of the okay and now our scarf is off the loom and so we have this little loop here this was the last loop that we had on the we're going to get our scissors and we're going to cut this working yarn now let's make it a little long so we have yarn to weave in if we want to all right and so now we have something that looks like this and what you're going to do is pull this back through you're going to take the big loop now and you're going to pull this yarn back through like that and now our scarf has been bound off and so that's how we make our basket weave scarf. <laughs>